Hey guys, Vlad here with AVT Astro, and tonight I've got a special treat for you guys, and that is the topic of EAA. Now, you know, quite frankly, this is a topic I've wanted to do a video on, you know, for a while already. I've kind of been avoiding it just because it's a really deep topic, but, um, you know, I do, you know, keep on recommending EAA to people that I talk to. And um, I don't really have, you know, like a good, you know, like a link to send them to for information about, you know, what EAA is. Uh, so this is the video to really just kind of like surface detail, you know, get you, you know, introduced to the topic. So what does EAA stand for? It stands for Electronically Assisted Astronomy. And essentially what it does is instead of using an eyepiece, you're going to use an astronomy, you know, type of camera to replace your eyepiece. Um, and as the title implies, gets you uh, the light gathering ability, essentially, of a much larger telescope. So let's look at the basic equipment that you need to do that and kind of get into it. All right, all right. So let's take a look at the equipment here that we've got going on. Now, um, you know, the first thing that I'll say is don't get scared. This is way, way, way more equipment than what you need to do AA. Uh, this is actually my astrophotography rig. This is what I usually do astrophotography with these days. Um, essentially, um, the only things that you really need is, uh, let me zoom out here, is, you know, some kind of a scope, whether it be a refractor. A refractor is a good way to start, and SCT is another excellent, excellent way to start. You can do it with the DAUB. In fact, you know, the guy that, you know, kind of got me into AA, he's a club member, a very good friend of mine. His, his name is Mark. Uh, he does EAA with a 16-inch go-to daub. Um, that is, you know, a very, <laughs> a very deep way to get into it. So, I, you know, that's not necessarily what I, you know, kind of like I'd recommend to start out with anyway. Um, but yeah, so some kind of telescope and, you know, some kind of astronomy camera. Like I've been using ASI cameras, uh, you know, based on Mark's, uh, you know, initial recommendation and just kind of... You know, in general, I've used them. They're great cameras, but you know, some kind of astronomy camera. You know, doesn't really matter too much what. Now, I've actually got two cameras on here. The reason for that is because this is normally my guide camera. This is an off-axis guider. Off-axis guider. Again, you really do not need that for EAA because you're doing exposures that are really short. So, um, you know, just kind of ignoring this thing. So, essentially, telescope camera. This guy here, this is an automatic focuser, an autofocuser, or an electronic focuser. You do not need that. You could do EAA just fine with a manual focuser. Um, now, there is a couple of ways to actually, you know, essentially control your camera. Um, I've got the ASI Air Pro, which is like a little mini Android box that, you know, does, controls like all the ASI, you know, gizmos. Um, I am actually going to be in for this video doing EAA with this box just you know for the simplicity sake of it um, Realistically the more powerful way to do it is with um, With sharp cap, which is uh, I believe it's only a Windows program Might be available on Mac these days. I'm not sure but I think it's only Windows um, So yeah, just for the simplicity sake, we're gonna use this guy here, you know, the Windows version is free for the basic functionality uh, so that's actually a cheaper way to do it. it's actually the more powerful way of doing it but we're just gonna use this guy it works all you know basically the same way um, so yeah that's essentially you know the only things that you really need um, you know equipment wise now you do need some kind of a mount that is a tracking mount um, pretty much anything that's got tracking chances are will work you know pretty well for EAA uh, for EAA, you know, unlike um, astrophotography, you're not doing like minute long, typically two minute long or five minute long subs or exposures, you know, subs is, you know, is uh, the word for exposures. Um, you're typically, you know, like when I do AA, um, I usually do like five second subs a lot of times. Um, you know, sometimes if I'm looking at a really kind of interesting subject and I'm, you know, I want to get like more detail on it, I'll go to like 15 or 30 seconds. Typically, I really, you know, very, very rarely go over 30 seconds, you know, for EAA type of uh, applications. So anyhow, yeah, um, once it kind of gets dark outside, you know, we'll... Uh, 
will kind of uh, do a rough polar alignment. Oh, look at that. There's some deer running out there. Uh-huh. Yeah, they're enjoying the good weather, too. <laughs> All right, guys. And this is not special effects. It is actually dark outside. For those of you guys that uh, watch my channel, know, um, know that I'm not known for special effects. <laughs> you know, maybe one day I'll get there. <laughs> but anyhow, um, so I'm kind of doing uh, rough polar alignment. Uh, for those of you guys that are more advanced and, you know, kind of know about polar alignments and stuff, this is where I'm at right now. For EAA, this is perfectly good enough. You know, for astrophotography, I'd probably get this, you know, a little bit more, you know, uh, dialed in. But, you know, this is perfectly good enough. So I'm going to hit finish here. I'm going to salute to our first target and we'll see what EAA is all about. Alright guys, so the scope is, uh, or mount is roughly polar aligned. Um, we have a rough focus and I just salute to M13, right? And um, so if you're not familiar with astrophotography, EAA or anything like that, so this is a one second exposure, right? of M13 with a 4 inch telescope not too bad right so what I'm gonna do is just zoom in on this Oop, kinda out of the field of view and then this is a one second exposure of M13 with you know this isn't really even EAA, I mean, I guess it kind of is, you know, it's just like a single shot of a one second exposure, right? Um, pretty crazy, right? I mean, that's not too bad. So what I'm going to do right now is, um, you know, normally you could uh, do manual focus on your scope, right? You could like turn the focus knob. And uh, focus the telescope. Uh, since this thing does have the autofocuser, I'm just going to run the autofocus routine just to make sure that the focus is still right from the last time I used the scope. I mean, the stars look pretty round, so it looks pretty close, but I'm just going to run the autofocus real quick. And then, yeah, we'll start this, uh, you know, the EAA process, and I'll kind of explain what it does as it's doing it, and, you know, you'll kind of see the image basically being produced So as you just saw, the autofocus routine just completed. We're in perfect focus. And, you, you know, you could do this manually, especially for EAA. <clears throat> um, but anyway, so the basic premise of EAA is that you take um, a bunch of shorter exposures, right? And you stack them. Essentially, what the software does is, this, you know, it'll take, you know, in this case, we'll do five second exposures. You take one five second exposure and then you stack the next one and the next one and the next one on top of each other. And that basically builds an image that's better and better and better. 
Um, so it's almost like, you know, viewing an image live through the screen. So let's kind of, you know, take a look at how this actually basically is done. Again, you could do this either with the SI Air Pro, which is what I'm using right now, or you could use SharpCap. There's a few other programs um, on your PC. I'm just doing those just because my scope was already set up with the SI Air Pro. Um, typically when I do serious EAA, um, especially out of my observatory, I do use sharp cap though, but let's, you know, let's check this out here. So basically I'm going to go into live and then I'm actually going to, yep, so we are at five seconds. Uh, we're not going to do any flat or dark frames because I haven't taken any, um, with this current setup and, you know, that's kind of more of an advanced thing. So yeah, let's just, you know, start the stack is what it's called. And, you know, you're watching live basically, you know, what the telescope is seeing out there, which we've got to center at M13 right now. So there comes the first image, the first five second exposure. So I already took the exposure. As you can see here, it's loading the image. Uh, with the SI Air Pro, um, it's Wi-Fi isn't terribly fast. I mean, it's a pretty high resolution image, like a 4K image that it's loading right now over Wi-Fi. So it does take a little bit of time, uh, not too bad at all. So there's the image fully zoomed in. It's actually, you know, M13 is actually way down here. So what I'm gonna do is kind of um, zoom out. And, uh, so there's M13, you know, this is like a full frame, a 4K full frame. Sorry about the focus on the camera here. I'm basically using my wife's cell phone to tape my cell phone as, uh, <laughs> as I'm doing this. Okay, so let's kind of zoom in on M13. And yeah, a lot of detail, a lot of stars there. And actually, it looks kind of overexposed here. And uh, that's really because of the camera on my wife's phone that's kind of overexposed. So let me switch to the pro mode on it. And I'll kind of resume the video in a sec here. All right, so just switch to the pro mode on, on the camera here on the phone just so that I could actually control the exposures. Uh, so this is basically what I'm getting, you know, so far. Not too bad, right? And this is, um, let's see. Looks like this is already 20 frames that are stacked. So let's zoom in a little bit more. Um, kind of looks, you know, like a little fuzzy, I think, you know, on, on the camera. On the screen on the actual phone, this does look, you know, kind of sharper. And this line here, I've got an LED light bar that's kind of making that. It's not like, you know, on the in the picture or anything like that might turn off turn that off in a little bit here but um anyhow yeah and i'll, I'll post an image you know once we're kind of done with the stack um i'll post an image in here uh but yeah so right now we're at uh 28 frames is what uh you know like as you can the frames the, um, i'm getting that number from right here so this is 20 so let's say 30 uh stacked fifth uh five second uh frames right now of m13 not too bad right So um, if you have, you know, whatever type of aperture scope, you know, you, you can kind of compare this image, right? I mean, pretty bright, um, you know, right now I've got like really bright LED lights on, <laughs> on my deck. And um, yeah, I mean, the camera really doesn't care. It doesn't care about local light pollution. Oh, and it looks like we did get a, um, satellite through the frame um you could actually 
I don't know if you could do this with the ASI Air Pro, but with the uh, sharp cap, uh, it's got Sigma, Sigma clipping to where you could get rid of those. A lot of medics actually get rid of those. So yeah, that's M13. Um, for a live stack, you know, like if I was doing live stacking, um, you know, for checking out an object, you know, that's already a pretty good image. And you could save these, you could share these, um, you could actually save these as individual frames and stack them later and edit them in Photoshop or whatever other software you want. So pretty cool. Okay, so we're going to... Um, you know, I'll I'll hit the save button on here and, and save this, even though I've already got way too many uh, images of M13. Um, but you know, we'll we'll go ahead and save that, and then kind of move on to a you know what I'd consider a bit a more difficult object. And uh, yeah, okay, so there you go. Let's save the image, and then I'm gonna hit stop on the stacking. Um, and then let's go to, let's see here. So you gotta go to preview. And then we'll do, um, I wanna say um, 51, which is kinda almost overhead. So hopefully the mount doesn't like hit the tripod or anything. Um, but yeah, let's let's see how that does. Because that's a really interesting galaxy. And so there goes the scope slewing, right? So we're going to M51, just raise the exposure. Okay, cool. Yeah, we got plenty of range there for EAA. Sweet. So <clears throat> Okay, you can kind of see this live, actually, the way that the SI Air Pro works. And, lo and behold, oh, it's having a hard time focusing. Okay, there we go. Lo and behold, there's M51 really dimly on there. Again, that's a one second exposure, right? And if I zoom in and get this thing to focus, Maybe. Possibly. You could kind of see spiral structure in there already with the one second exposure. Keep in mind, four inch telescope, right? <laughs> um, so yeah, let's let's start the stack again. So we'll go to um, live stacking and then start the stack. Yeah, because this camera is having a hard time focusing with that zoom. Okay, there we go. That zoomed in option. All right, let's see. So it's shooting the first exposure, and now it's loading the first exposure. So keep in mind, this first image that we're going to see, <clears throat> this is only a five-second exposure, okay? This is why I think EAA is so powerful and so crazy um, that um, even, you know, with the one second image, right? Let's see, let me zoom out. Okay, so zoom in. All right, you're seeing spiral detail with the four inch telescope. <clears throat> Pretty crazy. So right now, um, as you can see, it's, you know, the image is not super detailed or whatever because, you know, um, a spiral galaxy, even though this M51 is a, kind of a bright one, but it's still kind of a more challenge, challenging object than, like, you know, a globular cluster because it's especially M13, it's a pretty bright one. Um, and, you know, you might be like, well, you know, it's not super bright, um, but what you could do, right, is you could actually play with this a little bit. So what we're doing is doing uh, adjustments on the histogram there. And basically, um, what you could do is essentially dim down the background. 
Um, you brighten the galaxy itself, and you know, you kind of play with these settings. Alright. Um, to where... Yeah, you could kind of, you know, on screen adjust how, um, and I'm, I'm, right now I'm actually adjusting the settings on the cell phone camera that I'm using to shoot this video to kind of match what I'm seeing on the screen of the, of, of the other cell phone. Um, and yeah, so right now we've stacked, you know, as you can see, 22 exposures. Again, I'm, I'm looking right here. So this is 22 five-second exposures. Um, so, you know, a couple of minutes worth of exposures only. And um, yeah, uh, you know, if, if you've seen an image of M51 like this, <laughs> through anything that's like less than a uh, 20 inch daub uh, visually you know I congratulate you because you're probably in outer space <laughs> I mean this is you know this is pretty darn good um, as far as you know the amount of spiral structure that you can see on video it's kind of hard to you know like portray this but there's actually a decent amount of color that you could see this, especially if you're, you know, seeing this on the larger monitor, like if you're, if you're actually using sharp cap. Um, yeah, so EAA, it's just super powerful. Um, you know, it works really well with, you know, smaller scope. I actually do EAA with the 12 inch uh, mid SCT which, you know, the amount of detail that you get out of that, I'll try to post an image in here of, you know, some of the stuff that I've shot. Um, <clears throat> I forget the name, but there's a, uh, there's a nebula in M33, which is, you know, a fairly close galaxy to the Milky Way. Um, but yeah, I mean, you know, you could get detail within other galaxies, <laughs> you know, it's, it's just totally crazy. So yeah, this is M51, and I'm gonna stop the video here. But essentially, you know, again, what it comes down to is you're taking several, you know, short exposures of an object, the software stacks them automatically, and you get, you know, a pretty amazing image. That's why I think it is so cool is that, you know, just a few years ago, I mean, people had to work pretty hard to get an image like this. And as you as you saw, I mean, all I had to do is right. I um, I set up my scope. Um, I did a fairly rough polar alignment, which is really easy with the ASI Air Pro because it kind of you know guides you through it. Um, in my case, I have an autofocuser that focuses the telescope. <laughs> Um, I almost feel like it's cheating, you know, and then, you know, here I am, right, getting an image that's just crazy detailed, I mean, you know, with essentially no effort, you know, so it, it's, it's, it's a very, very powerful thing. So yeah, if you guys have any questions, comments, or anything like that, please leave them in the thing below. If you're not subscribed, please consider subscribing, and I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye.